Fuel system diagrams can be extremely useful, so I'll show you a couple of types I use and why you should always draw it out before you order parts. Let's get started. So fuel systems are one of the most neglected systems in a vehicle. They're mismatched or over or under fueled for the application or just generally forgotten about. Filters especially, we've talked about that quite a few times. And I've done a lot of fuel system videos and I'll leave links to those above as we talk through them through this video. But I'd like to encourage you to gather as much info as you can to get the system right for what you're working on. and. It, sometimes that looks a little bit different and that's why you have to kind of plan things out. So if you know how much horsepower you're going to make or want to make, then selecting the right engine, carburetor, and then fuel system is key. But I want to show you a diagram that I like to use. And we've talked about this one quite a bit in the past where I've referenced this diagram to show you just the basics of a fuel system. And the fuel tank and the filters and the pump and, and a put putting in the pressure regulator. Well, I want to take that a step further because a lot of the comments that I've gotten on this chart is help me figure out how to draw this out so I can order all the pieces that I'm going to need. Filters, pump, regulator, all the fittings and hose that go with it. And it's a really good idea and I do this quite a bit and even though I've been doing these for well quite a long time, I still to this day will draw one out even if I kind of already done it before, that way I know exactly what I need to order for all these individual pieces. But more importantly, it's the hose and fitting side that will really screw you up. So I want to talk about that. So we're going to talk about a couple of different um, diagrams that I use, and then I will leave some links to these down below. So on my website, if you want to download them, use them yourself, or download them, modify them, print them, and then take your own notes on them. I promise you it'll help you get this all sorted out. So let's talk about some of the individual pieces of this first. So before we talk about the diagrams, I just quickly want to talk about hose and fittings because it's really important to understand what you're going to use and what you're trying to fit into your diagram before you get started. So I use Fergola almost exclusively, but I also use quite a bit of Russell, and I use this Russell tool to put together this twist lock or push lock style hose. And once you see the video on how this tool works and how easy that that goes together, I think you'll agree it's one of the easier A and style fitting systems to put together. So before you get started, if this is the style of hose you're going to go with, I would strongly recommend getting a catalog going online and just taking a look at all the different types of fittings that are available. That way when you start laying out your system, you'll know what fittings are available and what can go in each slot. There are straight type fittings, there's ones that are 180 degree, 45 uh, 90 degree and those turns will help you kind of get through some radiuses. There's all sorts of bulkhead fittings, uh, fittings that go for a, a, a pipe style fitting, uh, an ORB style fitting to the, the push lock. So it's really important to, to get a good idea of everything that's available because as you're trying to draw it out and look at the vehicle and determine okay here's where the pump is going to go this is the type of line or this is the type of connection that needs to come out of it and here's a turn that needs to happen you'll know the fittings that are available so definitely check the, that video out on how that use that tool I think you'll find that that push lock or twist locks type type is really really nice and just makes things so much easier. So anyway, now let's talk about the diagram and then we can kind of see how all these fittings fit into it. So this is a really common one that I use on carbureted systems. Whether you use a single feed Edelbrock carburetor or a dual feed Holly, it's all the same, but it'll give you a really good basic you know, outline of it and then you can kind of start drawing things in. So here's how I'll use this one. Once you get out of the tank, you just need to understand how you're coming out of the fuel tank. Now, if it's a regular barbed end fitting, you'll need to go from barb to AN, so that's the type of fitting that will go there. Then you'll need another straight fitting that will connect to that as well, uh, and then that way you can kind of get the, the line going in. Now, again, it's all gonna be vehicle specific, so maybe you've got you know, some turns that need to happen, whether it's down, whether it's across a fuel or a, a frame rail or something, whatever it is, you have to kind of visualize this as you draw it out. So in this case, we're just going to use dash 08 line. Typically on the, on these types of setups where you use a dash 8 and a dash 6, it's, 
650 700 horsepower naturally aspirated and under is good for that setup that dash 08 line will will fuel a lot of power and a return line of that size is perfect now you can run dash 8 and dash 8 on both sides if you want there's no negative to that uh, but sometimes on the regulator, uh, the dash six is an easier, depending on the type of regulator run. This is this type of regulator has an ORB style fitting on it. So you have to be conscious of that when you're putting it together that you'll need an ORB style fitting uh, and then a straight that comes out of that um, to connect to the line. So just you're just trying to write all these things out. And as you're getting them, that way you can start to go, okay... Uh, dash eight straight and then you start counting them up where you need them and once you've got all of those then you can kind of determine you know the number of them and then you can just keep going back over it just to make sure <laughs> that you've got the right number of fittings in here but that's a good way to do it um, depending on the type of filter you use now this one has the the uh, and style fitting ends already on it so you're just going to attach straights to that but it depends also too how you're going to attach it to the fuel pump in this case with this Edelbrock style pump you've got ORB ends so you'll need fittings into there on the inlet and outlet and it's sitting at, a, at an angle so if your inlet is coming in this way you have to kind of make the determination of where it's going to go in the vehicle and if you need a uh, angled or a turned type uh, hose end to come out of that so you can run the line the way you want it you can run a straight fitting out of here if you've got a lot of room underneath the car but i typically like to make things a little bit cleaner and adding a, a, a 45 or a 90 degree turn into a fitting is not a bad option there so it's just one thing to be considerate of and, and like i say as you're putting this all together that's why it's a good idea to be online at the same time and say, okay, here's the part number of the filter that I'm going to use. And it does have AN fitting ends on it, not an ORB style, and you can, can account for that. So it's also another way when you order them like this to reduce the number of fittings. So then it's just a simple case of just going down through here. You're going to need straights here, potentially, again, depending on the type of, of fitting that you have here or if you're going to run line or if you're going to run these all very close together which typically happens uh, on this type of setup where you run filter pump and filter very close to each other that's fine um, and then the the lines going in and out of the regulator now on a holly on a dual feed style carburetor you've got multiple different exit points obviously because you're feeding both sides and a good regulator has a has outlets for both so you can push out and then whatever type of fittings are in the carburetor and then you just send it back on the return line. So it just kind of all depends on what you want to do with it, what ends and bends you need in the, in the fittings. But it's best to kind of write this out. And if your, your pump takes ORB style fittings, you know you're going to need an ORB, ORB here, and an ORB-8. So ORB dash 08 you know you're going to need a couple of there and then as you do it you can just kind of make tally marks you know as you go you know throughout the deal and just kind of keep track of it that way and kind of count it out again the more times you go over these types of of drawings and write down everything you need and continue to go over it and modify it verify the fitting ends that you're going to need and the turns you're going to need in it and the type the better off you'll be so don't don't hesitate going over this a dozen times with the car with the parts that you're going to use whether you've already ordered them or haven't or if you're well very lucky you can order everything all at one shot and uh, maybe save so save yourself a little bit of freight uh, or potentially some time but uh, anyway it's a very very complicated deal and, and really what you're just trying to do is eliminate ordering multiple times and i will tell you no matter how many times you do this you're always going to forget something so don't feel bad when you do it so that's the carbureted system and kind of the general way to do it let's talk about efi systems also real quick so now we'll jump into the efi system and it's not much different really you just have some different pieces to the puzzle and in this instance if we run a, a, a external or a frame mounted fuel pump you can again still make all these same types of 
of drawings. One thing to be uh, to be considerate of here is a lot of the fuel rails that you'll see on the market, unless it's a very, very high-end rail, you're building a very high horsepower application, a lot of the fuel lines are dash six, and so you have to be a little cautious of that or, or at least conscious of it as you're ordering things that you're going to come out of here or into here with dash six uh, fittings. Now, if you're running dash eight line, that's fine to feed all the way through. Uh, and then uh, once you get to the, the fuel rail, you know, switch over to dash six line. It really doesn't matter. You just have to be cautious when you're, when you're trying to determine what fittings you're going to need at these points, which ones you're going to need and understanding that you're going to have to adapt to that that uh, dash 06 rail um, a lot of them come some of them come with the, the the fittings already on the end kind of like we talked about with the filter uh, a lot of them have an orb style end on there so it's just something to be understanding of and in a, in a efi system regulator goes after the fuel rail and then the return so typically in this type of situation where you're on a dash eight line and a dash six uh, you know those are fairly accurate uh, maybe it's 800 600 but 850 and 650 is kind of the ballpark that I work with. Um, maybe a little bit different where you're at. And you can always verify that. You can go to Aeromotive's website uh, or any of the fuel system manufacturers. They typically have some sort of layout that they'll put on their website. So you can kind of see how they lay things out. And sometimes they'll include part numbers for all these things, which is certainly very beneficial uh, and helpful. One other thing here too is sometimes this is a single rail system that I'm showing. Sometimes fuel rails are on either side of the intake so uh, to feed the injector on each side. So if it's two fuel rails then obviously you're going to run uh, two lines out of there to feed it uh, and then into the, into the pressure regulator. So just something to be aware of. But again same type of thing. Draw it out Start to understand what fittings you're going to need based on the, the connections that are at each of these points, and then you can kind of go from there. Now let's talk about one other thing where, where the pump is in the tank. Now let's talk about the internal style where the pump is in the tank. And if you've watched any of my videos here recently on, on anything that I've worked on, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the putting the pump in the tank, even on a carbureted setup. Don't be confused by that or don't be concerned by that putting the, the pump in the tank is a very very good solution to a lot of things the positives here far outweigh the the one negative that the old school guys will tell you that well if that fuel pump fails then uh, then you gotta drop the entire tank the man, every manufacturer on the road today almost all of them have the pump in the tank uh, they don't fail that often when you run the pump in the tank, it keeps it very close to the fuel source. The starvation issues are typically almost always eliminated. Uh, it keeps the pump cool is another one that's that's a good uh, benefit of that. And if you're running an EFI system on this, uh, getting a good signal back to the computer saying, hey, I got plenty of fuel, it's cool, it's running really well, is not a bad idea. So I'm a big fan of the pump in the tank, so don't discount this. Even for an old school carburetor guy, it's a really cool way to go. So one thing too with that, if you're going to run a pump in the tank, I'll always recommend that you put the bigger pump in it. And by bigger pump, I mean higher pressure. And the reason why that's important is if somewhere down the road you do want to switch over to an EFI system, if you've got a pump that's capable of putting out that 58, 60 pounds that sometimes those really large injectors require, then you don't have to continue to upgrade this. You've upgraded it once, it's done, it's in the tank, it's good. It's the regulator that changes in that instance. Now you can use a carbureted regulator to dial down a, a a high pressure pump into a low pressure system uh, like typically the Edelbrock takes about six psi Hollies are six six and a half they typically like uh, sometimes a little bit higher but the regulator will dial back down that that big pressure that the, the pump is putting out so again same thing just try to figure out what it is now this one I drew out for uh, somebody that wanted dash six line and I was trying to explain to them how it all went together and how the pieces kind of fit together and again 
how they could start to draw it out based on their vehicle. He had an intake pump and wanted to run Dash 6 line. Lower horsepower, I think he was about a 400, 450, something like that. And Dash 6, we determined, was going to be just fine with it. So I gave him some notes over here. I have a copy of this one also on the website. You can download it as it is if you want to see how that works out. But same thing, out the pump into the two filters. You can daisy chain those right together and then into the pressure regulator and then return line here and then out to the carburetor. But again, you're trying to determine all of these fittings in every connection point. And sometimes with the hose, you'll have something that's kind of broken up here in the middle. But for the most part, once you get out of the component, you're really not breaking these hoses in half for whatever reason, unless you're going through a bulkhead. And that's a, a totally different animal anyway. But uh, that's a really good basic drawing to kind of get you started. And then, like I said, all you're doing at this point is once you know what type of pump and regulator and filters that you're using and what the fitting sizes are on, on the, the hat or whatever that's coming out of the tank, you can start to draw this out that I need dash 06 straight and I need, you know, this many as you're counting through the system. Same with any ORB fittings or any 120 degree or 90 degree, whatever the case may be. Just make yourself a list, and then as you go through there, go, yeah, I think it's going to need a, a, you know, this is an ORB, so I need two fittings here, so, okay, great, and then, yeah, this one's also an ORB, so I'm going to need two more, and maybe that's all you need, but as you continue to walk through there and marking off what you think, it'll get you a good idea of what you need to order. And that's generally it. If you use just a regular basic diagram that I've, I've given to you all in the past, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, and in most cases, again, every time I build a fuel so system for a vehicle that I'm working on, I always draw it out. It just makes it that much easier to make sure that you're not ordering five, six, seven, eight, ten times because every time you order something, you realize, Oh, I forgot to order that fitting for here. So again, I'll leave these on my website so you can download them. Even the old basic old school one that we've used a hundred times on the, on the channel. So it should give you a good idea of, of kind of how things go together and start to figure out piece by piece and what the connections are that you need to make. So that was just kind of a quick snapshot of really how all that works. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Leave them down below. I'd love to kind of help you figure out your fuel system. And maybe if you use one of these charts, if you're kind of stuck on kind of how it goes together or what type of fittings you'd need or what you what I would recommend for the how much horsepower that you're looking to build, I'd be happy to answer all those questions. So anyway, if you got any something out of the video, please leave me a thumbs up. I always dig that. Uh, and if you didn't get anything out of it, leave me a thumbs down. I'm cool with that too. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video. We'll see you.